Okay, so we're going to start by talking about Duke, and then at the end of it, I'll try to toss in a little bit of the Cornell business prompt. First question, 250 words, what is your sense of Duke as a university and a community, and why do you consider it a good match for you? If there's something particular about our offerings that attract you, feel free to share that as well. In my mind, I'm immediately breaking it into two questions. The first is, what's your sense of the university and community, academically, socially? And then why do you consider a good match for you? So you're going to have to use I statements. Here's what I'm looking for. And Duke offers this, aligns with me in this way, synergizes with me in this way, affords me these opportunities, compels me, prepares me in these kinds of ways. Uh, when I'm first dealing with a school and getting a sense of the community and the university, you usually go to the Duke's mission statement. So I just went to duke.edu and then uh, eventually found about Duke and then went to the mission statement. So in the mission statement, you're going to read a lot of fluffy language. It's normal. But this is where you'll start to see some hopefully distinguishing factors uh, compared to other schools. Again, a lot of it might be the same. So they're looking to provide real leadership in the educational world, outstanding character, ability, and vision. So vision is an interesting word that stands out to me. Carefully selecting students of character, determination, and application. And by pursuing areas of teaching and scholarship that most help develop our resources, increase our wisdom, and promote human happiness. So right away, I would be pointing to things like human happiness, vision, character, determination, uh, and wisdom. These are key words that I would start utilizing. They're primers for me in terms of what I would want to talk about. So I would jot those down into my, you know, um, my Google Doc if I was starting to brainstorm things out for this prompt. You always want to do your research first. I'll name drop those specific words I pointed out. Um, mission of Duke University is to provide a superior liberal education to undergraduate students, attending not only the, uh, attending not only to their intellectual growth, but also to their development as adults, committed to high ethical standards and full participation as leaders in their community. So this is really key to me. You want to hold yourself to a higher standard. You want to be moral, ethical, and you want to lead. You want to lead in your community. There are things that uh, you want to help change in your community, and you're willing to put your foot forward to make that change and to be the person who takes on that burden. If you're that type of student, check out Duke because Duke is looking to train those types of students. So this stands out to me. And you can continue, et cetera, et cetera, going through this to find the personal things that resonate with you. Again, what I chose may not be exactly what resonates with you. That's what makes this so interesting because some students will read the same thing and then instead say, you know, Jay, I've been really interested in the international community element that they do because maybe I have a foreign exchange student or they're looking for an intellectual environment where it's free and open and they want to continue to uh, focus on sophisticated medical research, which is which Duke is very proud of and, and known for and and. and has trailblazed in. So there's many different reasons uh, and you just have to match it with your profile, match it with uh, what your intentions are. Do I need to go directly into a major interest here? Not necessarily, but it would be helpful for you to do so because when you look at the other essays, there's not really a, a, a why major for our school, kind of like a USC uh, common prompt. There is a why major optional, the intellectual experience, and I'll touch upon that later because I do think this is a good choice. But for here, it's 250 words of first aligning yourself with the philosophy and the meta of Duke, then aligning yourself with the academic opportunities at Duke. So this is where you then have to think about what your Duke major choice is. So let's say you're doing biology at duke so you do duke biology and they'll have their very own department of biology website and here you can go into why study biology at duke and again you just have to extract relatable information from this i want to go because to duke because i want to not only be capable and, and experienced in the latest laboratory techniques so that i can be productive in in a world-class you know research environment like the cdc uh, or yada yada but I also want the opportunity to connect that with interdisciplinary interests of mine, like law and business in the future. And not a lot of schools are very confident in that and, and capable of providing that in both world-class ways. So to that effect, you know, I'm interested. Hopefully you get the idea. Uh, you also want to look at some of the courses. Sometimes they have upper division concentrations. Uh, I've mentioned this before. You can, oh, this is really nice. So zero to 99 is basics. 100 is the basics. 
then it gets a little bit higher when you get into like the 400 series. So sometimes you want to look in the 400 series to see where they have like these super specialized courses that not other schools will offer. And then obviously, last but not least, you should be looking to research. Um, you should be looking into the different areas that they focus on, whether it's biophysics or genetics or genomics or neuroscience. Do your research. That's the key. Find things that naturally align with what you want to do. It's The question here is not meant to be super narrative heavy. I would argue that it's much more about, do you have a plan? Do you have a logical reason why you want to attend Duke? Does it synergize well with the career and academic goals you've distinctively set for yourself, you, you've distinguished for yourself that uh, then Duke can clearly service uh, and do that all in 250 words. The other two, the other questions. So we want to emphasize the following questions are optional. <laughs> They're going to trap you guys. You remember optional is not optional. Optional is mandatory for all the tryhards out there. Feel free to answer them if you believe that doing so will add something meaningful. Of course it will if you write it well. Not already shared elsewhere in your application. Four optional questions are available. A maximum of two can be selected. Okay, so here's my thought. Um, if you're applying for Duke, chances are you're also applying to a couple of other S tier, tier one schools, Stanford, Harvard, et cetera. And so the number two option stood out to me right away because it connects really well with the Stanford uh, intellectual the curiosity essay, uh, which is 250 words. So if you wrote for Stanford a very high IQ major choice intellectual essay, then you might be able to just copy paste that over onto here. And that would be the ideal. On the flip side, if you haven't started writing Stanford, for example, uh, you can write this knowing that eventually it will be recyclable to a lot of other S tier, top tier school prompts. So I'm a huge fan of choosing number two. Uh, this is a chance to not show necessarily why major for college, because remember, you're putting that in the first essay. But here, you're trying to just show me that you have this super, super genuine high-level curiosity, high IQ for something that's either major-related or interdisciplinarily. Oh my goodness, words are hard. Interdisciplinarily, there we go, related to your major choice. Otherwise, then you're left with one more optional you can go with. So that left me between one, three, and four. I feel like one, three, and four are kind of the same essence of a question. It's, a, it's kind of like a diversity question. What might you bring to our community? So if you, whichever one you go with, one, three, or four, know that that's, or five, sorry, including five, that's up to what your story, what your personal elements can, can support. Um, if you write one, three, four, or five, I can see you purposely writing in a way where you recycle it later to, let's say, the Harvard diversity essay. So for me, uh, I would be suggesting things like number one to make it, uh, like actually all of them are translatable to diversities if you really think about it. So it's whichever one you personally connect with. But I will want to give an example to uh, how you could show diversity in terms of what you can contribute. One of the things that I've been noticing about my students is, you know, uh, if you're typically a Chinese American or Korean American, and you don't really have that much life hardship or, 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 or life range of experience, what can you write about? Um, one example that I've been giving is trying to think more uh, granularly about what uh, your Chinese American heritage really is. Because you can say that, for example, you're Chinese American, uh, or you could go one level deeper and say that you're really from um, uh, a family of, and more like a community of Chinese American restauranteurs, uh, restaurateurs. So people, uh, families that came to the U.S. and started trying to make a living going for the American dream by opening up restaurants uh, for like Korean Americans, for example, there's uh, a lot of families that I know of that started by opening up dry cleaners. So that's the kind of industry they grew up in. And as a kid growing up, uh, you know, you'd go to your parents dry cleaner work uh, business the store and maybe from there you can start developing a more uh, a thinner slice of what Korean American life was like for you growing up. And with that thinner slice of what it means to be Korean American or Chinese American or whatnot, um, you can be able to stand out from the rest of the crowd. 
uh, for Koreans, I, I see a lot of like, I was bullied because I brought my kimchi to lunch and it smelled. Um, it's not, it's, there's some essay tropes to writing about your ethnicity that, uh, you want to be careful of because it's, it's not that it's bad. It's just that it's very common. And therefore, because it's common, it, it's generic and bad. Um, but yeah, I hope that was helpful. I'm looking for students that, uh, can like Duke is a great set. Now that I think about it to work on first, because you get your why major, why college kind of figured out in the first essay, you get your intellectual high IQ, why major version, which is for Stanford and a couple of other schools. And then you have this diversity essay, which almost every college now has because of the post affirmative action calling where they're using the essays now to try to see what your, your cultural distinguishments could be or, or unique contributions might be if, if it's not cultural. Um, yeah. Try to thin, try to slice your life experience into more, um, specific regions. So another example could be like, you know, I'm, uh, I'm Korean American, but when you look back into my heritage, I, I, I go all the way back to, uh, the fishing villages north of Busan or something like that. And how that carried on throughout into the, the heritage of, of what you learn today about your family, your, your life. Um, yeah, that's all I want to say about that for Cornell. So I had a comment in, in one of the, the videos I posted and it was a request for a Cornell one. Um, we encourage you to think broadly. So this is the main essay. And then uh, depending on the major you choose, they give you a different essay set. So here's the college of business. And it's a simple question. What kind of business student are you? Use your personal academic or volunteer experiences. Describe the topics or issues that you care about and why they are important to you. So they're asking for evidence. Uh, they're asking you purposefully to resume flex. Here, What have you been working on over the last two years plus to show me the direction, industry, goal, and vision you have for business as a student? Uh, your response should convey how your interests align with the school to which you're applying with within the, the Johnson College of Business. So you have two main choices. Um, I already did the research there. So if you go to Cornell's business department, they separate the bachelors of um, their department into two. So it's applied economics and management, and then it's bachelors of science and hotel administration. And look right on the left-hand side right here and the right-hand side, you have immediate things that you could point to. I want to learn about business because my parents started a business and now I want to learn business and marketing too versus, you know, I'm really interested in, in combining both business entrepreneur, uh, business analytics with um, international trade and development because I grew up uh, with a family that uh, uh, was deeply impacted by the, the, the China trade wars in the Trump administration. And that led me to see kind of how the dynamics of the world are shifting to the point where, and then yada, 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 yada. So if you are writing for a Cornell business application, I can immediately tell whether you're going to have a low IQ reason why you want to do business versus a high IQ reason why you want to do business. Um, I'm going to be very blunt about it. I think like 90% of especially uh, students who are applying for business are being told by their parents to, or they think it's a good idea because they think it makes a lot of money. Investment finance is commonly just like kind of rolled out. But when you ask them about what they think about the Fed's interest rate policy or what's happening with real estate in China or, you know, other things like that, they're completely oblivious. They have no idea. And that's when I realized like, you're not going to make it to a school like Cornell. So if you're, if you're really interested in business, um, you should be watching CNBC, you should be watching Bloomberg, Wall Street Journal, you know, you, you should be trying to get as much awareness about the ongoings of business today, of econ today. Um, that will then help you connect your reason why you want to do business to something that's a higher value, higher IQ signal. Uh, where should I look? How should I specialize that, that signal? Let's look at the concentrations. So these concentrations on the right. Um, I wouldn't just stop at marketing. I wouldn't just stop at strategy. I'd go one level deeper into that. So what is currently the subtopics of marketing today? 
and the 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 industry specific experiences that you've been pursuing is it marketing in um when it comes to like a, a certain type of like fashion industry are you do Shein and how quickly they rose to to fame and uh success versus are you doing you know strategies that relate to um I don't know, strategies that relate to like changing logistical supply chains for small businesses. Um, yeah, I'm getting off track here. If you plan on doing the hotel administration, that's good luck. That's super duper tough. But same kind of concept. There are specialized areas on the right-hand side. There's broader meta goals that you're trying to reach. Uh, I'll give a, an idea about how to think about why you want to go to a college. Like the, the, the frame of mind you should have. I'm a huge basketball fan. Uh, teams have certain philosophies. So for example, the Lakers would say, you know, we're focusing on defense. Defense wins championships. When they, uh, if you look back versus, let's say the Houston Rockets, when they, back in the days when they had James Harden, it wasn't about defense. It was just all offense, all three pointers. So you have two different philosophies now in a team. You have an all offensive mindset versus all defensive mindset. So colleges are kind of like that too. Uh, if you look at colleges, they are, emphasizing global interests they're emphasizing innovation they're emphasizing social equity inclusiveness division uh or sorry inclusiveness and diversity uh, other times there you'll see that a lot of schools are kind of hybrid and in between so you want to start looking for am i looking for a more defensive type of school or an offensive type of school is hopefully that made sense so look at look at colleges in that way so then align yourself. Okay, I'm more of a defensive kind of guy. I believe in that philosophy. That's why that initially drew me to your school. You know, I'm interested in thinking big, for example, for Dyson here, about solving world economic challenges. Because over the next 10, 20 years, a lot of things in my mind are going to start to challenge the status quo and create a lot of disruption. And with that um, comes from my own personal experience with my family, a huge amount of human suffering and loss that can result. And what can we do to prepare for that? What can we do to mitigate as much of that? That's what I want to learn. So solving world's biggest problems economically is what initially drew me to Dyson. But beyond that, it's also going deeper. You know, Within Dyson, I see that I can take my broader interest and connect that to the areas that I think are going to be the most impactful to that effect, such as business analytics and my particular interest in food industry management because that's where my parents grew up. We were, you know, Brooklyn... Uh, Asian American restaurateurs in Chinatown. See the personal connection you can make. Anyways, I hope that was helpful. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. See you guys next time.